On today's Locked On Senators, you want playoffs? We got playoffs. We bring on our good friend David Foote, play-by-play announcer over the Belleville Senators to preview this playoff series up against the Toronto Marlies. Let's get into that on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützler, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 1030 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains, today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first ticketing purchase. That's concerts, sports, you name it, they got it with game time promo code locked on NHL. You can also follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter, locked on dot senators on Instagram. The show is free and available on all podcast platforms, including on YouTube, where we say hello and let you know a like, comment, and subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. Today is Tuesday, April 23rd, and Pilsy, man, you look great in that sweater. <laughs> yes, that's a great way to lead off this show, Ross. That's definitely show leading material here as I finally got my Sense Central merch. Now, I will say, Ross, obviously the uh, the OG merch like uh, or secondary OG merch that you're wearing, those are nice. But the next round of our merch is even cleaner, even nicer. So I highly recommend everybody check out our merch at our store. You can go find the store in the link tree below, but Pilsy, the real lead of the story is the gosh darn Vegas Golden Knights are doing it again. Doing what? Mark Stone scored the opening goal, assisted by Noah Hannafin, who they could <laughs> only get because his money was on LTIR. Oh, and then Thomas Hurdle scores later in the game, and guess who assists that? Noah Hannafin. Like, come on. Yeah, I mean, if you're the Dallas Stars, you got to be uh, fans, you got to be upset. And they let Mark Stone know they were upset. Uh, I don't know if you caught it, the intermission interview. He can't even hear a word of what uh, the lady was trying to ask him because fans are just booing down on him. And hey, rightfully so. Like the Vegas Golden Knights, they're they're the villains of the hockey world. Uh, you, you picture Knights as being the good guys, but the Golden Knights, they're certainly the bad boys. And they pick up game one win up against the Dallas Stars. Some are only one game in, others are two. Which team should be the most nervous that their playoffs are going to come to a screeching halt? Oh, this is an easy answer for me, Ross. It's the New York Islanders. Uh, They already were fighting an uphill battle. You get a 3-0 lead, you're starting to feel good about things, and then it all crumbles in nine seconds. They went from leading to basically the game being over. So... I just, I don't see how the Islanders climb their way from a two nothing deficit. Now it's going back to New York. So that's good for them, but I don't, uh, I don't see how they get it done. And also in game one, they played like their two best periods of the season. They outshot Carolina and, and they, they were tied after two periods. And then, I mean, since then Carolina's kind of run amok ever since they fell behind and in game two, they, they dominated that game and deserved to win. So easy answer there. They held the Islanders to only 12 shots on goal. Absolutely wild. Great job by the hurricanes making my hot take prediction. Just absolutely pitiful. Yeah. Although I did think the Islanders were going to win when they are up two goals with only 10 minutes remaining. Yeah. I'm going to spin zone this, though, Pilsy. I think a team that won should be the most nervous. As we are recording, Elliot Friedman just posting saying that Thatcher Demko is out for game two of the Canucks series against the Nashville Predators and is d- not doubtful, but is uncertain for the rest of the series. I mean, I know he was out for a bit at the end of the season, and, well, the Canucks weren't that great to finish the year either look i i know thatcher demko is a big part of this team but i I think people are blowing this out of proportion i think the canucks still get it done up against the preds even with casey DeSmith. 
I don't know, man. Casey DeSmith had an 895 save percentage this year. Thatcher Demko, 918. Not a math guy, but that's a few extra saves that they're not going to get. And that game one was pretty tight as well. I'm just saying, it's not a foregone conclusion to me anymore that the Canucks are are favorites in that series. Well, you've been a Nashville guy since day one, so that doesn't surprise me. But yeah, look, obviously, it's a big deal. But I think like people are re retweeting that being like Canucks are done. It's over for the Canucks. Like, I don't know. Bump the brakes on that one. I, I still it's gonna be a good series, but I still think the Canucks squeak through. Okay. Any other playoffs thoughts you want to get to? Because this is a playoff based episode, but we're gonna be joined by David Foote in just a couple of minutes to chat all about the Belleville Sens matchup against the Toronto Marlies, of which you will see with your very two eyes tomorrow in Belleville. Well, while we're on the Marlies, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs get things done here. And now, Ross, obviously not cheering for the Leafs at all. But a Leafs playoff collapse is only good if they have hope. So the spin zone it that way. Like if Boston was to go up 2-0 here, then you don't get that, that ultimate heartbreak and devastation. You want it to be close. You want the Leafs fans to think they have it, just to have it snatched away from them. So that uh, that's how I'm spin zoning that. And then... I think the Edmonton Oilers may be a good offensive team would be uh, my next point. Uh, yeah. Five assists for Connor McDavid. Five assists for Connor McDavid in the first playoff game. Just uh, as expected. I don't even think he exceeded expectations. It's just another game for him. Yeah, I don't see any way the LA Kings can win a seven game series here. There's no way. And kind of cool. Zach Hyman on Passover, one of the most holiest holidays in the Jewish calendar. Gets a hat trick, starts his playoff off off on the nice. right foot. So I think that's a nice little kind of feather in his cap uh, there for Zach Hyman. Huge win over the L.A. Kings. We'll touch on the playoffs a little bit here and there throughout. But as I mentioned, man, we're fired up for Belleville making yeah. a push to the Stanley. Not Stanley. Darn Calder it. Cup. Next year, the Stanley Cup we'll talk about. Maybe if we're lucky, the Calder Cup playoffs kind of start Pilsy. Are we? No, not going to say oh. it. Oh, no, I don't really want to say it. Okay, don't say it then. I'm going to say it. Oh, this is like a play in. It's not really the playoffs yet. Yeah, but the, this is different because this is the standard AHL format, right? Like, it's not like weird COVID years and they've changed things like this is this is how it goes. So, okay. So there's still six. If Belleville wins this best of three against the Marlies. Then there's still 16 teams left in the playoffs, which would be the start of the four round system that the NHL uses. The AHL is a grind. Like the uh, people overlook how much of a grind it is. So to, I would argue the Calder Cup is harder to get than the Stanley Cup. Well, one man who knows the grind of the AHL, and that's David Foote. He traveled to all 72 games this season. The bus, the bird, where I got to spend some time with him here in Winnipeg. He is one of two six-time recurring guests on Locked On Senators, tied with Igor Sokolov, who you can see on yesterday's episode of Locked On Senators. So we appreciate all our great friends of the show getting to build these relationships and get you the insight that the citizens deserve here as we head in to the best part of the year where you're watching hockey, but you're wearing shorts out to go do your errands and you're feeling the, the, the late sunsets. It's light out for longer, like all these little things that here in Canada, we have to soak up for the months that we get them. So really looking forward to the next few weeks and hopefully months of Belleville sends playoff hockey, but let's get to David foot. Who's going to break things all down broadcaster for the Belleville senators. You're listening to locked on senators. It's your team. Every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball. That means you get your tickets even faster and easier. If you want to get down to the ballpark, check it out on Game Time. They got killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, lowest price guarantee. That takes all the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. But it's not just baseball. It's not just sports even. It's comedy, music, theater near you. You can find it on game time. Last minute deals. You can save up to 60% buying last minutes for all your nights out on the town. Flash deals. They have exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. 
all in pricing. So you know what you're paying for before you get to checkout. There's no surprises and the lowest price guarantee. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find a ticket for less than the same row and section. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NHL L O C K E D O N NHL for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. All right, we now welcome on our good friend, the play-by-play voice for the Belleville Senators, David Foote, getting ready to call some playoff hockey tomorrow night. The Belleville Sens taking on the Toronto Marlies at CAA Arena. Footy, we saw the atmosphere last Friday was electric as they clinched a playoff spot. We hoping for more of the same tomorrow? Yeah, I think we are, absolutely. Um, Yeah, that was, uh, in terms of Belleville Sens games, uh, you know, since 2017-18, that was up there. Uh, as far as I can remember, uh, when it comes to the energy and the atmosphere in the and the noise in the building was incredible. Uh, I'd put it up against the home opener in 1718, the, the very first uh, game here in, in the friendly city. And then even in uh, up against the playoff uh, run from a couple of years ago when we went out in two, uh, two games to, to Rochester, uh, the building was unlike anything we've seen in, in a while. And even some of the, uh, the staff downstairs who had been around, uh, Belleville in, in their OHL time uh, were just talking about how it felt like the old days at the old Yardman Arena. Uh, the, the place was rocking. And yeah, we, we definitely are hoping for much of the same here on, on Wednesday night. Now, that was a massive moment, uh, not only for this year's Belleville Senators, but footy, like Igor scoring those goals to clinch into the playoffs, like that might be the biggest moment of, of this franchise's history. I'm trying to rack my brains of bigger moments. Sure. There's highlights and stuff, but as far as like yeah. emphatic moments, that's the top one for me. I don't know about you. Well, that empty net goal, uh, and I've never been so excited to call an empty net goal in my life, <laughs> but uh, that empty net goal is the reason that the Sens ended up with home ice advantage, right? If, yep. if not for that, um, I maybe on points, I'd have to go back and do the math, but I'm sick of counting numbers after the way the last three weeks have gone. Uh, so they, they could have ended up with home ice, but yeah, it, I mean, in terms of moments, you, you're absolutely right, Pilsy. It's, it's up there top five for, for sure. Um, together, the, the power play goal late in the game to tie yep. things. And I'm in the booth right now. So if I'm looking around, I'm, I'm just looking at the visualizing, ice. visualizing it all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But the the one time around, the, I haven't heard a pop like that in this building in a long time, like goals a goal, but everybody knew how meaningful it was to tie the game and get yourself out of uh, trouble, basically, right? Laval came in here. They had to win both games against us in, in regulation time last weekend for them to qualify and, and eliminate us. So the game tire was huge in terms of safety. And then the game winner into the empty net, just kind of the way it went down. Matt Highmore came in and had a crack at it. And at that point, there was only like five seconds left and he hits the post. And if you watch back the replay um, and we all know the the mood that Soko was in on uh, <laughs> on Friday night, if you watch the replay as Highmore shooting the puck, Soko's already slamming his <laughs> stick on the ice, yeah. celebrating that uh, they're going to go to overtime basically, or because he thinks that puck's going to go in. And then he has to race down into the corner and find it. And he manages to to tickle the twine there right before uh, time expired. So it was, uh, yeah, it was super exciting, really dramatic. And uh, I think, you know, hockey fans uh, here in, in the Bay of Queenie region and Sens fans are in for more of that as, as we push into the playoffs because uh, fourth place, you know, you look at it and, it and it seems like it's the bottom two spots they barely got in, not in the North Division. Any of these teams uh, would be higher up in, in any of the other divisions, and it's just been so incredibly tight that, um, you know, anybody can win on, on any given night in, in the North. So it's uh, Belleville versus Toronto in this best of three play, and the winner will get to take on the Cleveland Monsters in what would be a best of five series, the first round of the playoffs. Now, it's been 72 games, Footy. Looking back from all the highs and lows, how would you describe the 2023-24 B-Send season? Uh, I think I'll, I, I like to steal Dave Bell's uh, analysis. I asked him the same question after the game in Laval on Saturday, and he said if I had to put it in a word, it would be adversity. Um, he said you look at 
the amount of call-ups that we've seen, which is not new, let's be frank. You know, that's not a new thing for the Belleville Sens and the Ottawa Sens to be trading players back and forth all season long. Um, but, you know, from the call-ups to the injuries, which also you get every year, but maybe not to the extent Belleville's had this year. Like, sometimes we have a lot of injuries throughout the course of the year. This year, it was like major injuries to key pieces that we expected to be here for 72 games and make a gigantic impact in the season. Roby Arbeni is probably the biggest example of that. Um, but you look at that, uh, you know, Coach Bell cited all the uh, turnover in in Ottawa as well, because that naturally has a, a ripple effect. And uh, Mr. Ann Lauer and Steve Steos and company are, are trying to, to sort out things there before they can really put all of their focus here on, on Belleville. Um, and then, you know, couple that with the regular trials and tribulations of a 72-game season. And uh, and this team was able to to put enough wins together to get themselves in the playoffs. Uh, they quickly formed an identity. Like, it was November, and we looked at this team and went, well, they're probably not going to score 300 goals this year, but they're going to win a lot of hockey games, and they're going to work hard. And, um, you know, when, when I look at the things you need to be successful in the playoffs specifically – Good goaltending, we have better than good goaltending. Timely scoring, which is what the Senators have. Smothering defense, which is what the Senators have. Physicality, work ethic, unmatched by a lot of other teams. So, you know, roll down the list, and uh, and the 72 games puts Belleville right where they want to be. They're in a perfect position to hit the playoffs in a rivalry series and find some success if they can uh, continue to play the way that they have, especially these last two weeks, right? Eight of ten wins to finish the season uh, it was a strong strong finish so it uh, seems like they're peaking at the right time yeah as far as rivalry goes uh, I don't think you could ask for a much better rivalry uh, playoff matchup here footy as Ross and I know from working in Belleville those two teams they always show up and pretty much all season long except for there was one weekend where the Marlies beat up on the send uh, Belleville and then Belleville came back and beat up on them but other than that Almost every game has been a one-goal game uh, throughout this season. Which player on Belleville do you think is going to have to have their best here to really make? Because th these are going to be close games, in my opinion. I think these are two closely matched teams. But which player do you think for the Belleville Senders is going to have to shine for them to pull through this? So a shameless plug, we have uh, Brock Ormond and I have a similar discussion about this on uh, episode 21 of the Belleville Sens podcast, which nice. just came out today. Um, and yeah, seven of the 10 games between these teams were one goal games. Um, four of them went to overtime. One went to a shootout. Uh, there was one two goal game. And then I think a four goal difference. And then the eight nothing Toronto win that I think you were referencing there, Pilsy. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the series has been incredibly tight. And and if you look at the rosters, like just pull them up, pull up the Toronto uh, Marley's roster, pull up the Belleville Senators roster. And it's not obviously a knock on any of the players playing for the Senators. But if you roll down the list and you're not a Sens fan, there's probably not a lot of names you're going to recognize. But if you look at the Toronto Marley's roster and you're not a Leafs or Marley's fan, you're going to see names that you recognize. And, and that's what the Toronto Marlies are kind of known for, right? They, they wield the wallet a little bit. They have a gazillion players on their roster. Um, they always seem to have those veteran guys that know they're not going to the NHL, but are, you know, top five, 10 players uh, in the American Hockey League. So they're always difficult to play against. Uh, I'd look at a guy like, obviously, Igor Sokolov, like you can't count him out, not just because he had, uh, 12 points in 10 games against the Marlies this season. But because of what we saw on Friday, uh, just the emotion, the way that he uh, carries himself, the way that he seems to play when the energy and emotion get ramped up, and that's going to happen more so in a rivalry series than than you know even against Rochester in the playoffs a couple seasons ago. So uh, he's going to be a, a key piece of things. But honestly, I, I think the... The area to watch for Belleville is going to be the defense in this series. Okay. Uh, the Senators are they are going to score some goals. Uh, it's more so going to be about how they slow down the Toronto Marlies. Uh, this is a, a, a high-power potential team. Now, they didn't necessarily reach that potential throughout the course of the season, but uh, I'm looking at, uh, at the guys like Jacob Larson and Tyler Clevin and Max Gannett, if he's healthy, et cetera, to uh, really help to shut down the Toronto Marlies. And then on the flip side, along with Sokolov, Wyatt Bongiovanni has been outstanding since coming over from Manitoba. 
Angus Crookshank is hopefully going to be back from injury since he's been returned. Uh, I think you look at, at the usual key guys, and uh, even someone like Zach Ostopchuk, it'll be his first pro playoffs, but he's got playoff experience in junior. He had some really good stretches throughout the season, maybe not in the last week or so, but uh, he's someone who's probably poised to break out a little bit as we get into the first round here as well. And just further to your point, Footy, Belleville's top goal scorer, Angus Crookshank, of course, missed 22 games via missed, injury missed and call-up. 22 games and uh, still was uh, only one point shy of leading the team in points until Garrett Pilon caught him on the weekend. So, Oh, we'll get into the vets and what they've yeah. done. But the comparison's sake there, though, is the Marlies have four 25 or more goal scorers, including an old friend. Former captain Logan Shaw has got 30, the team leader. So that should be a fun matchup there, eh? Having Logan Shaw leading the, the Marlies into town tomorrow. Yeah, it, it's not as jarring as it was last year when you rolled into Toronto the first time and Shawzi's there in blue and white, and you're just like, ah, I don't I don't like this. Like I, I still don't like it if I'm if I'm honest. Uh, but yeah, Shawzi's one of the nicest guys that uh, that you'll meet. He's an incredible leader, and I know for a fact that he has um really maybe not change the culture in, in the Marley's dressing room, but he has a big, uh, a big hand in that uh, as the captain, obviously. Uh, and I know the guys there really look up to him and, and he's been doing a great job in that role there. Kind of wish he was still here, but um, you know, we're going to hopefully ruin his season uh, come, come uh, Wednesday and, and hopefully Friday and, and not have to worry about Sunday. Now I know it was two week two years ago that uh, Logan Shaw ends up going to the Marlies, but just this past off season, Belleville, I thought, really made an impactful signing, not only with Garrett Pilon, but with Josh Curry as well. You look at Yuri Smekal, who when the signing came through, you're like, oh, is it for the NHL? He spends more than the majority of the year in Belleville. Nicholas Mattin Paolo on the back end. What kind of impact have these veterans made to you guys? Obviously a young team the last number of years, but does it just add more legitimacy to what could be a deeper playoff run? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the veterans are are so important in this league, and uh, it's kind of an, an odd situation because of the veteran rule, right? You can only dress six players who have played more than, I think it's 270 games pro in uh, North America. So NHL, AHL, ECHL, the major leagues over in Europe. And this season, for the first time in, in my memory, um, was the first time that we actually had a problem with the number of vets, and we had to have guys like Boku Imama or Garrett Pilon or Matt Highmore, et cetera, sit out because we had too many. Um, and you can look at that as an issue, or you can look at it as the fact that you have an abundance of leadership in your dressing room. And, and as long as you have some of those veteran guys who are okay with not playing every day, you know, maybe they're getting up there in age. Maybe they're 31 years old, like Josh Curry. Uh, who's the oldest player on the Belleville Sens, and they want a couple nights off, and they can appreciate that and, and understand what their role is. They're so important. But then you get the guys like, I mean, Josh Curry's been extremely effective uh, for Belleville this season. A guy like Garrett Pilon, who comes in, um, you know, his whole career in the Washington organization, wins the Calder Cup last season, comes into Belleville, first time in, an, in a new market in the AHL, first time in the new city in the, in the AHL, just absolutely blends in so perfectly, ends up being our MVP, ends up being our leading scorer. Um, you can't say enough about, about what he's done. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many, so many guys. Yuri Smakel, uh, he's played that role quietly, right? Um, power forward, um, can shoot, can uh, get in front of the goaltender, can make a difference when he's being physical. Um, they're all really, really big pieces of this. And, and I know in talking to Ryan Bonus at the end of last season, that was an area that they really wanted to address for Belleville, get the veteran guys in that can uh, help to support this younger uh, core, if you will. And uh, and that's exactly what they did. And I think we've seen that pay off here in, uh, in the Sens getting into the playoffs. Hope you're enjoying our conversation with footy. We'll get right back to it. But first, pillsy has got a word from one of our favorite sponsors. Yes, this episode is sponsored by Policy Genius. Life insurance is so important to have in today's world, and you want the best. So go to Policy Genius, the country's leading online insurance marketplace. 
you want to save time, you want to save money, well, you can do that with Policy Genius because you can find life insurance policies that start at two. $192 per year for $1 million worth of coverage. Some options even offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius will help you compare from all the top companies, and their team of licensed experts are going to take you through it step by step. Easily compare quotes from America's top insurers, just a few clicks, and you can find the package that works best for you. Look, guys, your work insurance policy may not be enough to offer the protection you need. And even worse, it may not stay with you if you leave your job. Policy Genius is going to give you an unbiased opinion from their team. They have no incentive to recommend one insurer over the other, so you can trust their guidance. In fact, thousands of people have with thousands of five-star reviews on Google. So check life insurance off your to-do list. In no time with Policy Genius, head to policygenius.com slash locked on NHL or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NHL and in the NBA. Baseball's in full swing and FanDuel is your place to wager on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. Tonight, obviously, Homer going for the Winnipeg Jets, minus 102 against the Colorado Avalanche, you ain't got goaltending, you ain't got anything, and the Avalanche are, to me, an underdog in this series because of it. So I like the Jets at minus 102. I'm also going to get a little crazy. I'm going to go with an anytime goal scorer, Vladislav Nemesnikov. He scored in the first game. Hashtag sends abroad. I like Nemesnikov to score, and I like the Jets to win on the money line. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. It's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Now, I want to get into a bit of the battle of the crease footy because both these teams have good young goalies. If you look across at the Toronto Marlies, Dennis Hildebees had a pretty good season and he's carried them to a lot of success. And then you look at Belleville and they've got Matt Sogard along with uh, the two uh, uh, other goalies in Mando and Levy Marilinen. But I think you're probably looking at a matchup between Hildeby and uh, Mad Sogard here. How has Mads looked different this year in your opinion? Because I feel like you know, he what didn't have the consistency down in Belleville and then obviously getting called up to Ottawa for a large stretch of games, even getting the call up this year. It's kind of broken up his season. Uh, to you, what's been the big difference for Mad Sogard this year that's allowed his AHL numbers to kind of shine? It's a good question um, because I don't really think all that much has been noticeably different. Like, y- you don't see him doing anything he wasn't doing before or – not doing something that he was doing before. He seems like the same old Sogi. Uh, I do think that the last couple of years of experience have made a big difference for him in terms of his comfortability, his confidence. Uh, you know, he didn't have as many games in Ottawa this season as he did last year. He certainly wasn't up and down at the same rate that he was last year. So a little bit of stability here helps. Um, and honestly, I think just knowing that he's got two guys behind him here, like Kevin Mandeleze, like Levy Marilinen, who can also step in if he can't and give this team a chance to win. Uh, I think there's something to be said for knowing that you're the guy, but not having to be the guy all the time. And I think uh, Matt Sogard has just been, he's just comfortable now in Belleville. It's his, his fourth season. Um, he set new career bests in uh, save percentage and goals against average, played a little bit less, in total than he did last year. Um, But yeah, I think it's just one of those uh, examples of consistency paying off basically. Uh, You know, he's getting lots of, uh, lots of experience. He's getting lots of games, lots of touches, and then winning also helps with that confidence, right? He finally picks up the first AHL shutout this year. Um, You know, just things like that really go a long way in, in terms of, uh, of a player solidifying themselves as the guy. And 
you know, nobody in the Belleville Sands dressing room needs to be more confident than Mad Sogard heading into the playoffs because he's going to be so important um, for a team that, as we've said a couple times already, does not score a lot of goals. And Mad Sogard just became the all-time leader in games played for Belleville Sens goalies. Did that with his last start of the season in the clincher on Friday. Footy, final couple from us. You mentioned defense going to be a huge key. A lot of Sens fans excited for Tyler Clevin. He was the number one prospect on our most recent top 10 prospect list we did in February. The numbers Great for a rookie year in the regular season. 21 points plus 14, 51 penalty minutes, which is cut down from his college numbers where every time he ran someone over, he was in the box for five or 10 minutes. How has his transition looked to the AHL game? And is he looking like he's more comfortable? Because I feel like when you're a big defenseman, you have to be confident that you can and should run guys over as often as he can. Yeah, if you want me to use one word, seamless. Uh, the transition to the AHL has been seamless for Tyler Clevin. You mentioned the numbers. Uh, you know, second best on the team in in terms of plus minus. Nicholas Matanpalo was the only one higher than him. Uh, Manti was plus 15 this season, which is also incredible. Um, I think the thing with Tyler, and, and you talk about him getting, you know, handed fives and tens for throwing those hits in college. He had 51 pims this year. He probably only had 40 pims. You know what I mean? Like he's still a guy who is is getting penalized for his size and his the way that he hits, right? He's he's a, a heavy hitter. He does play aggressive. He's not afraid to step into you. Um, you know, rather than just have you come to him and, and push him off. He's gonna lay a big hit. And uh I think from that side of things, maybe it took him a, a little while to kind of get used to it. Um, but from you know, the rest of his game from uh, the way he moves the puck, the way he sees the ice, the way he eats minutes, uh, nothing in his game to me at all this season has screamed, this guy is a rookie defender. Uh, and we were talking again on the Belleville Sense pod this week. Unfortunately for Belleville Sense fans, he's a guy that with a good camp in the fall, maybe you don't see him here. Or it's a JBD sitch where he ends up here, but not for long. Uh, I've been extremely impressed with, uh, with Tyler Clevin and, and what I've seen from him this year. And if I'm not mistaken, the last K train hit was against the Toronto Marlies, was it not? I believe it was. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have to roll back the old memory tape, but. Well, yeah. And I've got it right here, actually. Shout out to our guy at Sends Prospects, April 10th. Who else but Dylan Gambrell with his head down across the line? The hashtag Sends Abroad, bang. He's gone. Clevin running him over. So we like that. We also, if you want to get the uh, ball rolling on this storyline footy, Feel free for the broadcast, but all those Leaf fans, they were so excited to let everyone know that at the draft, their young boy genius, Kyle Dubas, traded down to get these two young five foot eight Finnish players, Roni Hirvonen and Topi Niemela. And oh, the Sens got this old caveman, Tyler Clevin. He can't play the game now. Well, that's going to be a great battle because Niemela's putting up some offense for the Marlies, but here, Revonen? Re Anyways, doesn't matter, but hey, that's going to be a good matchup to watch. The two 2020 draft picks going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, and, and Toronto, as much as they do pack the lineup with those veteran guys, they've got some prospects there that are, are worth keeping an eye on as well. Uh, and uh, the guy behind the bench is going to have probably an interesting offseason as well with John Gruden, the head coach of the Marlies. Yep. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm – Pumped up. I mean, it's the playoffs, so you're going to be excited anyway. But it's the first time in AHL history that the affiliate for the Maple Leafs and the affiliate for the Senators have met in the Calder Cup playoffs, uh, let alone as a true Battle of Ontario. Uh, I think it was Cornwall and Hamilton played each other some years ago. Um, that was the last time that two Ontario teams played each other in the playoffs, but it, they weren't affiliated with the Leafs and the Sens. So, uh, yeah, I mean, what more can you ask for, boys? Uh, first round playoff matchup, Battle of Ontario. Both rinks are within driving distance for fans of both teams. Um, you know, especially those of you listening out in Ottawa. Uh, we got tickets available for Wednesday night here for game one. We'd love to see more red than blue in the building. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun uh, either way. But I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, this team can do now that it uh, matters, quote unquote. And footy, I will be one of those fans in yeah. red at the building. Your, uh, I got your jerseys. They're they're hanging by my desk. They're all lettered up and good to go. So, yep, I'll be rocking a red Igor Sokolov jersey at CAA Arena now. 
obviously this is not the flex we want, but hopefully most uh, Leafs fans will be watching the Toronto Maple Leafs play on Wednesday and will be yeah. too busy with that to make their way to CAA Arena. So Sens fans, we got nothing better to do. Let's make sure we're packing CAA Arena and making sure those Marlies fans cannot be heard and are just being seen there because this is a big game. For the Belleville uh, Senators franchise here, I, I want to talk to you. you. You touched on it, the travel there. Just, I feel like that's a part of the AHL that casual fans don't really understand is the travel aspect is so much bigger. Maybe just touch on how the fact that it's so easy to get from Toronto to Belleville, how that's going to affect players on both sides uh, of the puck here. Yeah, well, we saw it two years ago uh, when we played Rochester in the first round. So the AHL does it by distance, and I don't know what the number is exactly, but if you're inside of X distance, you can do what we're doing, which is the traditional 1-1-1 right. one, 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 uh, for the first round. If you're outside of that distance, you'd either have to go 1-2 or 2-1, which is what we did two years ago with Rochester. Yep. So we were the high seed. We got to pick. We decided to start on the road and have game three at home. Some people were like, well, I don't know. Like, and then we lose both in, lose in Rochester in overtime, lose at home in overtime. Ugh. Game two uh, series is done. Now, if we were playing Toronto or Laval, uh, it works out as it is, 1-1-1. One, one, one. If we were playing Rochester or Syracuse, uh, we would have had to go 1-2 or 2-1, et cetera. If we were playing the Cleveland Monsters, because they're seven hours from us, yeah. um, all three games would have been played in Cleveland <sighs> because they're the high seed. So, like, we were sitting here going, you know, not that we can't beat the Monsters, but, like, we don't want the Monsters because we want home games in the playoffs. So that was kind of an interesting thing. And with that in mind, if the Sens get by Toronto, it's going to be Cleveland in round two, yep. and it would go 2-3 starting in Belleville for two and then going out to Cleveland to finish wow. the series. Okay, well, you've already got me fired up, Footy. We're excited to hear your call tomorrow, AHL TV. And you can also follow Footy, Footy on the air on social media. Any final thoughts, Footy? I'll just mention that the Belleville Sands Entertainment Network, free to listen, AHL TV. You can watch the game, subscription service. And for those of you in the Ottawa area, TSN 1200 will have the game on nice. Friday night from Toronto. Okay, perfect. Well, we're excited for all that, buddy. We look forward, hopefully do this again next week and prepare for the next battle. But hey, can't look past the Marlies at Battle of Ontario. Nothing better than that. Enjoy the call, man. We'll do this again soon. Thanks, boys. It's going to be fun. We'll talk to you soon. Stick taps to Footy for joining us. Always a fun conversation. Pilsy, as we said, we would do each and every show until the NHL draft lottery. We're doing three spins. One for the citizens, one for you, one for me, and we are tracking these results. We'll unveil the first set of results sometime next week. We need the data points to do just that. But Pilsy, do you want the first spin? Do you want the second spin, the third spin? You, Your, your world, brother. Let's keep it consistent, Ross. So I think I went first, you went second, Citizens went third. Let's uh, keep that consistent going. Okay. First spin, Montreal first overall. Yuck. Brutal. So yuck, we've yuck. got one seventh overall pick here. One seventh overall pick for Ottawa. My spin here, Seattle jumps up, which means Ottawa down to eight. Pilsy, this is the same as yesterday so yuck. far. We've got a seven and an eight. Yesterday, the Citizens came through. They got us a second overall pick. What can they do today? The same thing. Oh, my I God. Yes. I reset this both times. So the citizens are coming through clutch. So we'll keep this thing rolling, and then we'll keep it rolling as we near the NHL draft lottery. Still no update on an exact date. I believe it'll be the day in between the last day of round one and the first day of the second round of the NHL playoffs. But as that information becomes available, you know right here on LOSP, we will get you all covered. And we will also have our top 80 draft profile starting on May 13th, yeah. but in a very special edition of our mock drafts. The day after the NHL draft lottery, we will have a comprehensive mock draft for the top 10 of this year's NHL draft. So fired up for all that. Pills, you got any final thoughts on today's show? Yes. Final thoughts for me is I will be at 
the Belleville Senators game one. I already have my ticket, section 104. If you're going to the game, come say what up. I'm just going by myself. I just bought an aisle seat by myself. So just there supporting the boys. Get out there, support the boys. We need Belleville to really shine. This is a big, big deal for them up against the Marlies. We can't have all the Leafs fans invading our territory. So go get your tickets now. Say what up to me and uh, we'll have a blast. Look, the distance is no excuse. I'm driving three and a half hours each way to get to Belleville from Ottawa. You can get to Belleville in under three hours. So come on, get out there, get to CAA Arena. It's playoff time. Woo! Love it. That's a perfect WWE promo. Igor would be proud of that one as we tomorrow will have Mark Mathot on the show. We'll get into a little more NHL action with him and a whole lot more. Leave a comment below if there's anything you want to hear throughout the summer. It is off season for the NHL team. A quieter start to the week for Ottawa, but man, it is going to come fast and furious through June, July, the coaching search, everything else around it. We should mention Buffalo lands on Lindy Ruff. You can't sell win, sell hope, can't sell hope, sell nostalgia. A wise man named Brandon Piller once told me that one. So we'll pick up on that conversation with Mark Mathot tomorrow on the pod and a whole lot more later this week. For today, though, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day.